Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. My name is Sergey, and I was born in the USSR. So today we're going to talk about the Soviet money, Soviet cash. Well, first of all, you guys need to know that Soviet Union was, I can say strictly, but cash only society. We didn't use checks. I don't remember anything like credit cards, bank cards. Everything was cash. So for example, people at the factories or whatever places of work, they'll get paid twice a month. They'll have a paluchka, so-called, in advance, so advance, and then paluchka, usually 50-50. So pretty much like bi-weekly pay. And they'll bring cash from the bank and they'll have a, a lady bugalter who would have a list of people who work at the factory and amount of cash they're supposed to get. And then you get in line, uh, you sign that you got your money and she give you cash, counts the cash, and this is how you get paid. Then, of course, even in the Soviet Union, we had bills to pay, not many, but for example, uh, we paid for electricity monthly. So whatever your electric meter says, you write it down in a special book, and then you take that book to your local uh, bank, Zberkasa, get in line, and then you bring cash, and then you pay for electricity that way, or for your natural gas that uh, people had in apartments to uh, cook. So when I came to America in 1995 and started working in the summer camp here in Michigan, it was a, quite a shock when they paid us first time after two weeks we worked at the camp and they just gave me envelope and I opened envelope and there was a strange piece of paper with my name on it. And this is what I wrote about it. Director Tom came out of his office and started handing out the white envelopes. Happily, it was payday. I opened the envelope, but to my utter surprise, I didn't find any money inside. There was only a crisp piece of paper from some Chicago bank with account numbers and my name typed on it. There was an amount of $220 written there too, which didn't make any sense either because we were promised $350 of pocket money for the whole summer. Not knowing what to do, I approached our camp secretary, Janet, and shyly asked for explanation. And a little bit uh, later, I continued. So this is, was how my weekend had begun. I still didn't know what to do with my precious $220 piece of paper, which Americans apparently called a check. But I guess time or my friend Andre would tell. So when I got my first check here in America, I had no clue how to turn it into real money. And another detail you need to know about life in the Soviet Union, we had only one bank that we dealed with. There were other banks uh, like specialized with uh, foreign trade, but inside of the country, we only had one bank called Sberbank, Sberigatelny Bank, which you can translate like savings bank. And that's the only way you could save your money and earn interest is deposited in the state-owned Sberbank. So if you're new to my channel, I already have uh, four videos dedicated to Soviet money. I made videos about what can you buy with one kopeck, which is like a cent, one, it's a coins, two kopecks, three kopecks and five kopecks. I'll provide links below this video in the comments. So you're welcome to check it out. So there are quite a few items, but today we're gonna to talk about all the coins and all the paper bills uh, available in the Soviet Union. All right, so Soviet money, and we're gonna start with the coins. Одна копейка, one kopeck. It's the smallest coin available in the Soviet Union and it's about the size of American dime, American 10 cents. The first item I could think of you could purchase for one kopeck would be, of course, a box of matches. That was one of those things that never changed in Soviet Union. It was the symbol of stability. 
our matches were always one copper per box and supposed to be about 100 matches in the box. And we actually had this kind of joke, like, have you heard the news? Matches dropped in price. And that was funny, haha, -ha, it's already one cup, it can't go any cheaper. You can also purchase a glass of soda without any syrup. I already mentioned before we had this communal dispenser, you can purchase Soviet-style pop. So for one cup, you can get just a soda drink or but no syrup. Dvie kopejki, two kopejks. This coin was slightly bigger than one kopejk, but not much. Two kopejks was the price of the phone call on the payphone. So we call them telefon automat, like it's automatic phone, I guess, because <laughs> automat also a word for machine gun, automatic weapon. So one phone call, unlimited minutes, until people start banging on the window, tell you you gotta get off the phone. You can drop a two uh, copper coin and you can make your phone call. Three kopejki. Three kopejks. This coin was quite larger than two kopejks. Now, at the same automatic dispenser for drinks, for three kopejks, you can purchase soda with the lemon flavor or orange flavor. So one kopek will be just soda, three kopeks, you're gonna get some flavor. And maybe you can uh, taste the lipstick of the cute girl that just had a drink before you. In the 70s, the r tram ride, so on the tramway, was also three kopeks, at least in Kiev. But later they raised the price and made it the same across the board. So it doesn't matter bus or trolley bus or subway or tram, everything was five kopecks. But in the 70s, uh, one ride on a tram was three kopecks as well. Five kopecks. Five kopecks. This one was pretty large size coin. You had to have five kopeck coin to ride the subway. The price was five kopecks and the only way it will let you go through if you drop uh, five kopecks in that special turnstile, uh, we call it tourniquet machine. So the first thing always when I think about Soviet five kopecks to be subway ride, but also was the price of the bus ticket and the city bus or uh, tramway or trolley bus. 10 kopeek, 10 kopeek. So now we're out of coppers and into the shiny silvery change. And 10 kopeeks once again goes down the size, so it's pretty small coin. All my life I was addicted to tomato juice, so for me 10 kopecks always I'm thinking about a glass of tomato juice you could purchase at any, as they call them, vegetables and fruit store, ovashi, fructi i ovashi stores, and they will have a 3 liter um, jar of tomato juice open, and they just pour you a glass and you can add some salt and the price was 10 kopecks. 15 kopeek. 15 kopecks. So now this is kind of odd coin uh, since I live in America for over 20 years and got used to American change. The coin of 15 units is kind of weird why they had it, but that was a quite popular uh, coin. We had a lot of them and had a quite a bit of uh, purchasing power. 15 kopecks was the price of one game on the Soviet gaming machine. So we had those so-called Zal Igrovich Automatos. So it'll be a small building which it had installed all these different, I don't know, call them games, I guess, arcade games. So there'll be like submarine warfare, Podvodny Boy. There'll be some shooting uh, kind of arcade games. And the price was 15 kopecks per game. So it was pretty expensive uh, to think about it, 15 kopecks, because you could ride Subway uh, three times for the price of one game. 20 kopeek, 20 kopecks. So there's another odd coin. So instead of making it a quarter, 25 kopecks, we had 20. 20 kopecks was a popular coin to send your kid with to the grocery store to purchase bread, because you can get a loaf of bread for 16 kopecks and there'll be even change. Or your dad can send you to buy him a pack of Vatra Papyros, which was, I think was like 18 kopecks. 50 kopeek. 50 kopecks. Oh, sometimes uh, we use the old Russian word, poltinnik, which pol, it's like palavina, 
so the half of a ruble. This coin wasn't that popular, didn't have a lot of them in circulation, and they were very, like, pretty big size, and quite often they would issue 50 copper coin to celebrate some kind of anniversary of the Soviet Union or October Revolution, so we had a lot of those so-called Jubilene Manieta, anniversary, anniversary coin. For me personally, 50 kopecks was enough to buy a bottle of Pepsi. It was 45 kopecks, including deposit for the glass bottle, and then for 5 kopecks you can buy a little uh, bulishka, like a small bread, and I, for some reason, I liked a lot Pepsi and fresh, fresh bread, white bread. For some reason, it's a delicious combination, and I believe one of my viewers tried it, and he said it was actually pretty good. Один рубль, one ruble coin. That's another coin that wasn't really popular, didn't have many of them in circulation, and average person didn't like them because they were big, heavy, and they were a lot of money. So we tried to get rid of them as quick as possible. A lot of them were so-called, once again, anniversary coins, so they'll be minted for celebration of important milestones in the life of the Soviet Union. And you can get quite a bit of groceries for one ruble. I mean, you can make a really basic lunch out of it, or you can buy a pack of licensed Marlboro cigarettes made in Moldova. Okay, so this concludes my story about Soviet coins, and in my next video we're gonna cover the topic of Soviet paper money. So Soviet bills from one ruble all the way to 100 rubles. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. We'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at the teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you! And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union.